Hey, this is day 134. We're reading the whole Bible this year, and today we have four more Psalms for you, so let's get going. Today we start with Psalm 32, and it is a prayer and song of the joy of forgiveness. And it talks about how joyful is the one who is forgiven. And then it gets into what happens when we are not forgiven, and it's related to confession. If we don't confess and turn things over to the Lord, we are withholding his forgiveness from our sin. And so when we turn them over, when we confess to the Lord, then that's when he releases his forgiveness upon us. But if we act like we have no sin, then we get to bear the consequences of it, the full weight of it on our own. And it leads to our brokenness and destruction and ultimately our unforgiveness. In Psalm 51, we have a note here that is part of the original text, but it's not given a verse number in English translations. Hebrew translations, you might see some footnotes in your Bible. Say, for instance, Psalm 51. It'll say in Hebrew Bibles, Psalm 51 verses 1 through 19 are numbered verses 2 through 20 because verse 1 would be the title and any notes of the psalm. This psalm in particular tells us that it is a psalm of David when the prophet Nathan came to him after he had gone to Bathsheba. And so we have that entire account of David and Bathsheba and all of the horrendous sin. And then this is seemingly after the prophet Nathan has gone to him. And as he is repenting before the Lord, maybe when his child is sick, this is what he is writing saying, be gracious to me, O God, take not your Holy Spirit from me, restore to me the joy of your salvation. And this is related to Psalm 32, like we read that in our sin and shame, when we do not turn it over to God and we keep it to ourselves, then what we have is all the weight and penalty of our sin on us. And then we end up with the Holy Spirit being removed. All of these kinds of things are part of our lot. Look at what happened with Saul as we're reading through all of these um, Old Testament accounts. Saul, who kept everything and took it all upon himself, well, God withdrew his spirit. And that's the same kind of thing David's saying, I am turning back to you. I am not denying you or thinking I can handle this on my own. Please do not take your spirit from me, but instead restore to me the joy of your salvation and that place. And that's what we seek. And that's what we find is absolute forgiveness as we turn to the Lord in our distress and even in our sin and the brokenness that comes from that. Psalm 86 is another one that is a cry for mercy, a plea for forgiveness. And it contains a lot of this, like, Lord, I'm calling on you here. Uh, you know, I, I know that you hear me and I know that you are one who does all of these things. You are so great. And this isn't just like, the attitude here is not just mere flattery. And it's not like telling God something he doesn't know about himself, but it's more a reminder for us. It's I'm appealing to the God who is my healer. I'm appealing to the God who is my savior and my forgiver. I'm appealing to the one who is king and judge and Lord of all. And I seek you, God, in your gracious mercy, in your kindness and your love. I seek your mercy and forgiveness and grace. And that is the big takeaway in the way that these prayers of mercy and forgiveness are worded. Psalm 122 is a call to pray for Jerusalem, and it's basically a praise and an acknowledgement of the holiness, the set-apartness of the place where God's people go to meet in his name. And so as we gather to meet in his name, to meet uh, with the Lord and to celebrate what he's done, this is a place to be honored not to be worshiped we don't uh, elevate that place in some way that like we don't confuse it with god and we don't think that it brings blessing beyond the fact that this is where the people meet but also uh, there's a call to the holiness and worthiness of the place that this is a special place that should be honored that should be looked after that should be kept up well so we want to hold that in balance of making sure to honor the place where the people meet and uh, revere that a little bit as well as recognizing that god is not confined to a place like that especially this side of the cross when as jesus died on the cross the veil in the temple was torn and the holy spirit left from the temple and is no longer just that one place where the people meet with God. And so there's a bit of both. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit and also the church and the places where the, the body of Christ gathers together is a holy and sacred 
place uh, because that's where sacred moments happen as we gather in those places and we consecrate them by our presence together as the body of Christ. So as we look through these today, just like with the forgiveness piece, rather than being intimidated by the presence of the Lord or by his judgment and everything, we should be encouraged by his forgiveness since he is the one who is the only worthy one to judge then he's the one that we should seek and appeal to when we are in trouble, when we've sinned. And what does he do? He forgives us. He's faithful and just to forgive because Christ has already paid it all. And so what we should not do is take that upon ourselves and say, well, I've done something that's so special that God couldn't possibly forgive this. And so I'm going to hold it all to myself and I'm going to, I'm going to keep that from the Lord. Instead, we should turn to him as quickly as possible in our sin and turn it back over to him, seek forgiveness, seek his presence and not be hindered from coming to him, but instead be encouraged to go to him because he is the only one and the uh, the one who is always and absolutely faithful to receive us and justly forgive us because Jesus took on all of our sins so that we in him might become the righteousness of God. And so I hope that encourages you today. I'd love to hear what other thoughts and questions you have about this. Let's talk about that. Keep reading, keep praying. Let's go. Be rad for Jesus.